this video, I'm going to explain to you the equation that shaped the modern world. And I mean everything in the modern world, especially technology based. This includes AI, this includes electronics, this includes everything that we use in our day to day life. And this equation is equation number four in Maxwell's equations. It's called the Ampere Maxwell law because it has two components. It has the Ampere component and it has the Maxwell component and both of them create some type of effect that is gonna become very relevant. So what I'm gonna go into in this video, I'm gonna break down this equation and first principles, make it extremely simple. Even if you have absolutely no background in physics or math, I'm gonna explain what each variable means, how this equation comes together. Uh, and then I'm gonna, in the second half of the video, give you actual examples of how this is used in things like space communication, wireless communication in general here on earth, uh, any type of electronic application and even things such as AI, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this and just rewrite it from scratch. That way I can give it to you like variable by variable. So basically it starts out with this symbol right here. And then there's a B going in an arrow. Um, this basically means it's a vector. This B is the magnetic field. Um, this upside down triangle with an X or with a cross here, that means it's curling behavior. That means this, this, this variable, whatever it is that's in front of this upside uh, triangle with the X is creating some type of curl, some type of rotating behavior. If it was a dot instead of an X, it would be some diverging behavior. Now, obviously, we know from second Maxwell's uh, equations law that there is no such thing as um, diverging magnetic fields. Magnetic fields only curl. They don't diverge. That's why we have a North Pole, South Pole type of duality going on. But it's a little bit out of the scope of this video. But basically, we see that we, we say that the curl of the magnetic field, or basically a changing magnetic field, uh, is caused by two things. First thing is caused by is this other vector, j, with some constant next to it. Or it is caused by a dE over dt. In other words, a changing electric field with respect to time. So this, on its own, can create a magnetic field to curl or change. This, on its own, can also create a magnetic field to curl and change. Hence, they're separated by a plus sign. If it was a multiplication sign, that means you need both conditions to exist. It's kind of like an AND gate. But since it's only a plus sign, then it's like an OR gate. Like one of them can cause, can cause the other. Now, what does this mean? What is current density? What is changing electric field? What is changing magnetic field? Well, here's the reality of the situation of electromagnetics. Basically, if you have any charge that's floating around in space, if I take an electron or a proto proton and I just kind of hold it in space, like let's say there's this negative thing over here, then I basically have some type of electric field around it, right? And if you've taken any type of high school or college physics, you know that a charge creates an electric field of some sort. And if it was like negative, then it's like going in one direction. If it was positive, it's like going in another direction. And if there's two different charges of opposite signs, um, then they're gonna attract. If they're the same size, they're gonna repel, right? That's kind of the basics of, of, of Coulomb's law. But what this is saying is something that's slightly different. It's saying over here that um, if you want a magnetic field, you're gonna first have to create some current density. Now what is current density? Current, let's break down what current is in first principles. So current, is basically just electric charge moving through a wire. All right? That's what current comes down to. It is not the electrons moving through a wire. A very common misconception is that like the electrons themselves are like moving and running around, but that's not actually what happens. Current is the electrical energy that's basically bouncing off of the electrons and being transferred through the electrons. So it's like a pendulum effect. It's not like a moving um, effect. And we notice here that if you just have a charge that's like sitting and chilling and it's doing nothing, that will exert an electric field. But if that charge starts basically moving, that energy starts moving in the form of current and it has density, what, what, what we notice is that starts creating a magnetic field around the wire, right? In this case, this is a static magnetic field. Magnetic field is not changing. It has a static behavior. Um, that's because the current is constant. Now, if we were to start changing this current back and forth, accelerate it, decelerate it, do things of that nature, like we see in alternating current, then the magnetic field is going to be um, not static anymore. It's going to start changing. Now, another way we can, we, can, we can generate this magnetic field instead of passing current through wire is we can simply change an electric field. So if we have some type of charge that's exerting an electric field, and again, we take that charge and either we accelerate it or we have the electric field uh, being changed by some other effect, then that changing of the electric field creates a magnetic field because that energy has to go somewhere. And we start understanding that electric fields and magnetic fields are kind of two sides of the same equation. And we can prove that by having equation number three in Maxwell's equations, which basically says if you want the opposite of this, 
you want to create an electric field, well, you can actually induce that um, by changing magnetic field. So just like how a changing like a curl of a magnetic field can be induced by an electric field, likewise, in this case, a curl of an electric field can be induced by a magnetic field. So we basically start seeing that electric fields and magnetic fields are these weird things where like they can exist on, on their own, like the, 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 well, well, the electric field can exist on its own. The magnetic field needs some type of electrical behavior to create it, whether it's like the charge moving through a wire or whether it's the electric field itself changing. So that starts becoming a little bit interesting. And something very cool we see is that if we take the, these exact same equations, I'm going to rewrite them again just to make them a bit smaller, so you, you start seeing something that's very cool. Now I want to talk a little bit about these elements over here. So this is a J. This is a mu naught, E naught, D E over D T. So if I were to think of these elements, well, this element is the permeability of free space. This is the permittivity of free space. And these are basically two components that are describing the behavior based on the material that the electric field or the magnetic field or the charge is going through. So basically, if you are in free space, then you use this not symbol. And that means the electric field will behave at a certain way, at a certain speed, at a certain categorization. Uh, if you change the material that the electric field is going in, for example, if the electric or the magnetic field is going through water or like cloth or like, I don't know, my, my skin versus like just vacuum or free space, uh, it's going to behave differently. The, the magnitude and the amplitude and the propagation of that field is going to look different when you try to detect it. So those two variables basically tell us um, uh, that, that the material that you're going through will impact the behavior of the electric field. But here's what's cool is if we take this equation and combine it with equation number three from Maxwell's equations, which is Faraday's law. If we combine the two, what we basically end up is the wave equation. So basically, we combine them, and we see that especially these two variables over here, we take them and we take it over here, mu naught, e naught, or, or epsilon, and um, we know that this is equal to c, the speed of light. And later, if you go and write the wave equation, then you'll see that for, for a speed of light wave, the speed of light is actually the inverse of like 1 over square um, u naught e naught square. Or in other words, this can be rewritten as we can square both sides. And we can see that c squared is equals to 1 over, or here there's no square root, u naught epsilon naught, and so on. So you can take this and you can formulate the wave equation. I've made a separate video about that. It should pop somewhere, or I'll put it somewhere in the description. But now that I've talked a little bit about the theory, so to summarize this part, um, this equation is, again, very relevant because it creates, the, it's, it's the foundation of modern electromagnetic behavior, which is used for all types of things like radars, wireless communication, things of that nature. I'm going to now explain the actual application of this. So now that we understood what this equation is and, and the, the physics and the theory behind it, it's a good time to actually give you some practical example. So I'm going to actually try to give you an example within many examples. I'm going to give you an example from my current, one of my most recent projects. Right now, I'm working on a project that's trying to enable internet between Earth and Mars uh, using some new, newer kind of technology called terrorist technology. And let's just imagine that we have a ground station antenna here on Earth. So let's say this is Earth, and this is like an antenna. And then let's say this is Mars. And let's say there's a satellite over here that's like orbiting Mars. These are solar panels. And it has like um, some type of like omnidirectional antenna that's like a wire. Okay. Now generally, just quick disclaimer, if you're operating from Mars to Earth, you're definitely going to need a directional antenna. Uh, so um, in this, well, let's, let's just say this is the moon, just to make it easier. Okay. So let's say this is the moon and this is Earth. Okay, and we're trying to communicate between them. And then there's a satellite orbiting moon. Now, moon also technically is a satellite because satellite means something that's orbiting something else. So the moon is a natural satellite, but then there's an artificial satellite around it. But this satellite is trying to talk to this ground station here on Earth. Now, obviously, this is not drawn to scale. But the idea is that in order for this satellite to send signal, and again, I'm going to write this equation as a reference just to show you what is happening. So there's a little battery in here, and then there's a little radio, and then there's a little computer. 
So basically, the computer takes energy from the battery and it says, hey, we need to send some messages, we need to send some signals, let's say like some ones and zeros. And then it passes on to the radio, and the radio passes on to the antenna. Now, where this equation enables this thing to basically happen is whenever you're generating any type of signal through wire, well, that's basically happening based on current density. Uh, and depending on the circuitry you use, you may be using inductors, which leverage magnetic fields to store energy and do other things um, within the circuit. But let's say even, even once you're done with that, you pass it on to the radio. Well, the radio is basically converting those ones and zeros into waveforms, into RF signals that kind of look like this instead of just like the ones and zeros. And basically, it's starting to already operate within a very high frequency alternating current. Now, whenever you have high frequency alternating current, that means the electric field is changing very rapidly, which means the magnetic field is, very, is changing very rapidly. So here we have a situation where there's current that's generating an alternating electric field that's creating an alternating magnetic field. And once it's fed to this antenna over here, let's say in this case, this is a monopole antenna, uh, kind of like one of those stick radio antennas you see on a car, and it starts propagating everywhere. So then it starts sending those waves everywhere, in this case, omnidirectionally, like in all directions. And now those waves that are traveling, they are electromagnetic waves. And they are basically the, exactly what's being described here. A changing electric field that's traveling through free space is inducing a magnetic field. And then based on the other law, the Faraday law, We have a changing magnetic field creating an electric field, and so on. And those two are basically describing the, this behavior, which is the electromagnetic wave that's propagating through free space. And as a result of that, we can detect that signal. And this reflector over here does the same, where there's a little horn or type of some type of uh, re sub reflector over here. These waves all reflect and get picked up, and they get converted from oscillating electric magnetic fields in free space to something that's operating either within a waveguide or a coaxial cable, and then they get converted down to like ones and zeros through the radio, the receiving radio. And that's something that's very fascinating because without like proper understanding of electromagnetic waves, electric fields, magnetic fields, uh, we would not be able to build efficient radios. We would not be able to build good waveguides, good antennas. We wouldn't even understand why certain things oscillate the way that they oscillate. So that's an example, for example, from space. In the case of like on Earth communication, it's the exact same thing. But instead of like having satellites talk to ground stations, you would simply have um, like towers talking to each other that are telecommunications towers, uh, wireless communication towers, and so on. So yeah, um, this equation, Faraday, Maxwell, uh, um, the Faraday, the, I'm sorry, the Ampere-Maxwell equation Extremely, extremely, extremely important. If you're someone who's interested in electrical engineering, software, AI, basically all of computers, modern compute, uh, relies on this equation because we use electronic components and circuitry that is basically just current, electric fields, magnetic fields. Uh, and if you dive deeper into circuit theory, you'll see that there's multiple components like in, in circuits like resistors, capacitors, inductors. Capacitors are very electric field centric. Uh, uh, inductors are very magnetic field centric. And then um, components, like using telecommunications or whatnot, or anything leveraging alternating current, uh, is heavily, deeply uh, involving this concept of electric and magnetic field that are deeply inter intertwined, traveling either a waveguide or a cable or traveling through free space. So, anyway, I hope you found this a bit useful. Again, my apologies um, if I seem a bit tired. It's a bit late. Uh, lately, I don't have a lot of time to record these videos, but I really want to get this one out. So, yeah, I will see you guys in the comments or the next video. Either or. Peace, love.